Hi everybody, Jeff, your executive gardener. Hope everybody is staying healthy and um, finding some good hobbies to do during COVID-19. Anyway, great, great to have you here. I'm here with my loyal gardening dog, Nala. This episode is about one of my biggest issues, and I know many of you face the same issues as gardeners when you use containers, and that has to do with blossom end rot. So I'm going to show you an example of how I got blossom end rot in my tomatoes, and more importantly, what you can do to prevent blossom end rot. Stay tuned, let me get behind the camera and show you the issue that I'm having. All right, so here is one of my tomato plants. You can see it's doing really well. You've seen this before, it's in a five gallon container, and I have a good amount of nutrients at the bottom. Uh, for some reason, there's numerous reasons why tomato plants and pepper plants get blossom end rot, but at the root of the cause, is it's basically a lack of calcium in the cell walls that cause it to get mushy. So let me give you an example. This is a tomato, a young tomato. That's blossom end rot, okay? So the, what that means is the blossom side of the tomatoes, which were that flower, the blossom, um, for some reason, the plant is not taking up calcium and or the soil lacks calcium. So therefore you get this big black spot at the end of the bottom of the tomato. Now, I've picked this off, and the reason I've picked this off is that this gets mushier as the plant grows. You guess you could cut it out. Now, it's not a fungus. It's not a disease. It's simply a lack of calcium, again, keeping the cell walls uh, from, from being firm. And peppers look the same thing, but it's always on the bottom side. So you look at your fruit like that looks great. Look at the bottom. It's an issue. Now, on this plant, not every tomato has it. So... Uh, there's one of two things, again, that primarily cause this. It's inconsistent watering, um, which could be that you're watering too much or it's too dry or it's infrequent. And um, the plant, the roots, aren't able to uptake the calcium, thus causing a deficiency in the plant. And the calcium deficiency shows up with a fruit at the bottom, like I just showed you. Um, so I picked this fruit off because... Um, I want the other energy to go to the other tomatoes I'll have. Now, one of the things that you can do, obviously, to improve is you can be consistent with your watering. So what they really recommend in tomatoes is water really good, like at night or in the morning. We'll douse it really good. Make sure the bottom of the container has holes to, to provide adequate, adequate draining. And don't water it again until maybe, uh, depending on where you are, in Houston or Florida, it's kind of too hot. You'll probably need to do it every day. But if you're up in Pennsylvania this time of year or Michigan, maybe every other day, let it to dry out and then douse it again. It's good to do it once a day, not three times a day. So it's a consistent watering. So the rest of the plant, like I said, looks really well. And there's a few tomatoes on here that actually you can see that is a baby tomato. Uh, right there that there's no blossom end rot on. Uh, one of these is starting to get blossom end rot. That's blossom end rot right there. But you see the other one doesn't have any right there. So uh, it's kind of inconsistent. So how you fix it the other way is you buy additional calcium. So I use CalMag. You can go on Amazon or any place and it's a solution. Read the instructions. I believe it's one teaspoon per gallon of water. When you water your plant once a day in the container, uh, douse it really good and include some of that in there. The roots will start to get calcium. It should get right to the roots right away, uptake in the plant. Um, so a calcium end rot, excuse me, blossom end rot is uh, fixable. The other thing you can do is make sure, test your pH of your plant to make sure that the soil, excuse me, is where it needs to be. Also add a little gypsum in there. Gypsum does provide calcium as well. So again, that's my episode. The rest of the plant's doing fairly well. Uh, I, I do have some additional fruit on it, um, but the early tomatoes that came on this plant did have blossom end rot, which is unfortunate. Um, now, interestingly enough, on the same, on the other side, I do have a husky tomato plant, which I've treated the exact same way, same uh, nutrients in the uh, container, but you know, I do have some tomatoes you'll see under there. These are cherry tomatoes. Um, no blossom end rot on that, so seems to be inconsistent. Either way, you can also treat your container plant with that cow mag on a preventive basis. So I do it about once a week, like I said, one teaspoon per gallon of water. So I hope this has helped out. I can tell you again, blossom end rot is, um, has been my biggest issue 
in container plants for whatever reason. So consistent watering and a good calcium supplement. In addition, most of these have the magnesium part. You'll see Cal Mag, so it's four and a half percent calcium, 1.1% magnesium. Of course, magnesium is critical in the photosynthesis process as well. So that's what you'll usually find it. Cal Mag's available in a number of different brands and it works fairly well. It's pretty affordable as well. That's it for this episode, how to control blossom end rot. Until next time, it's Jeff, your executive gardener. Bye for now.